Now I'm going to give you a little bit of YouTube insight with today's pattern. I do pay attention to the channel's metrics, and for some reason we get a lot of new tires in January and February. I'm not exactly sure why. Maybe a lot of folks get new vices for Christmas, or they're just getting excited about the upcoming trout season. But for whatever reason, the last few videos that I've tied, fly tying for beginners, have done pretty well. But do note, anybody watching this channel for the first time, pretty much all of my flies are easy. So today's pattern, I got the design from Seaboyd Pfeffer's Simple Flies, subtitled Flies You Can Tie With Three Materials or Less. In fact, the one I'm doing is pretty much the one on the cover. I'm not tying it in black and white, I'm tying it as a sulfur, meaning a yellow body with a light colored hackle. But you could tie pretty much any mayfly with this basic technique, and it's not going to be a beautiful fly, but it doesn't have to be to catch fish. I've had plenty of good days during a sulfur hatch with this very same pattern. And I do use one technique in this one that a new tire might not have used before, and that's leaving a thread tag and wrapping it up as a rib. Now that's not a novel technique, but it's a good one to remember if you want to reinforce a body that's made out of something, you know, fairly delicate like a foam. So there is one in the vise, just a simple little two material foam body sulfur. Doesn't get much easier than this for a dry fly. Now I'm tying this on a size 12, standard length barbless dry fly hook. Now most of the time I will tie this on a 14, but I do tie in 12s and 16s as well. And I'm gonna use tan thread. You'll wanna use a light color thread, it doesn't have to be tan, but you'd wanna use yellow or white or something. But I'm going with a tan because I'm gonna rib this just a little bit and it will it might give us a little bit of segmentation. We'll talk about that in just a second. Now for the tail, just take a, a white or a light ginger hackle, pull out a dozen or so barbs. Not an insignificant tail. We're gonna make them about a body length right here. And let's go ahead and snip off these stubs up front. couple extra wraps to just bury that in. Now before we catch in our body, pull about four or five inches of thread out, put it in your finger right here, and take your thread back up here and then just catch it off. So this is basically a dubbing loop, but we're gonna use this for our rib. So we'll just leave these together and park them off to the side with your magnet. And now the body is just a, a foam. This is a pack with a three millimeter and a one and a half millimeter. I'm gonna go with the thin stuff. And I cut a little strip that's about as thick as it is wide. So it's kind of a, a square like looking cross section. You just catch it in a little bit in front of where we're gonna start wrapping it. Just enough to get you a good bind. And there we go. Now we'll bring our thread up here to a couple eye lengths back, about where we're gonna stop the body and start the hackle. Now we'll just wrap this up. And if you wanna try and get a tapered body, pull this tighter in the back. And you might be able to pull it off, but nah, maybe not. It's probably gonna be a pretty uniform body. So those are some pretty tight wraps, and now I can do some looser wraps up here. And if it works, you might end up with a little bit thicker of a body up front, which doesn't look like that worked because it's pretty uniform all the way up. But I'm just totally fine with that, and that broke on me, so got to be a little bit careful right there. Okay, so there's our body. We're going to be fine with that. Now I'm going to go ahead and counter wrap this thread. And I messed this up because I've got, got it on... Um, either side of that, that tail. I've got a couple of fibers coming through it. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna spin it, and now I'm gonna just counter wrap this up. So I'm kinda of spinning this, this thread, these two strands together, and I'm gonna wrap them all the way up, I don't know, five or six wraps. And this isn't really gonna give it a lot of segmentation, maybe just a little bit, but I don't think that's all that vital but it is gonna make it a little bit more of a durable fly. Okay, when you get it up front, let's go ahead and catch this rib off. 
Now let's take a feather from that same hackle and measure it till we get about, I don't know, one to one and a half. I think that is gonna work right there. Now, if you want a really perfect looking hackle, one tip you can do is just strip off all the barbs from one side. I'm not doing that here because well, I just don't necessarily need a perfect looking hackle. But I have stripped off a few extra on one side and that's gonna be the side that you wrap closest to the hook or the first. So let's catch this in back here, okay. And a, and a good bit back because with this thin hackle feather, we're gonna end up putting a good many wraps, maybe seven, eight wraps even. So let's go ahead and bind that stem in going forward. We'll snip it off right here. And you can see what I'm talking about. See how I've, I've only got half the feather or the first little bit only has barbs coming off the half the side. So my first probably, oh, I don't know, three or four wraps is just gonna be putting down half of this hackle. And sometimes that will help you keep the, the barbs coming off perpendicular. Doesn't necessarily look like that's the case right there. So I think this feather spun around on me, but we're gonna be fine. They're coming off for the most part kind of perpendicular here. And now I'm, these wraps right here, are they have barbs coming off both sides. So another three or four wraps up here to give us a, a nice pretty full hackle. It's really gonna help this float. That foam body is gonna float, but it's not gonna be a, you know, a big significant factor in it. So before I snip this off, I'm just going to pull everything back right here. And a few wraps going back, not too far back because you don't want it swept back, but just far enough back to get, a, get room for a whip finish here. And now let's snip the thread and then take care of the excess feather right here. And there we go. This one is a little bit bushier than the one I had in the vise at the beginning, but still a perfectly fishable fly. So that's it, my friends. A very easy foam body sulfur with two materials. So I appreciate you watching. Y'all take care and we'll see you next time.